Hey guys, Danny here at Parte. So, um, what well, we're in day three or four or five now of the protest, right? So just just rambling on, rambling on. We've heard over and over and over again about the color code of this paint. I'm going to talk about that real quick. But first, that first part of the video, uh, he'll know what that's for. Um, but that's also showing the little hand gesture. That's the lumens dropping because of all the, the natural and man-made light in the room. So that was just lumens dropping. That went a party way. <laughs> all right. So we talk about this interesting code color. I've said this before. Man, I don't say that smarty. I'm saying I, I just want everybody to understand this is a consistent message. Okay. There's nothing interesting about the color of that mix. Uh, the color of that mix is exactly what you get. As a matter of fact, if any of you guys have a can, a quart can of Rust-Oleum glitter, if you look at it now, it's not it's not usable for anything beyond craft as far as I'm concerned. Um, but Rust-Oleum glitter will give you that same hue. You have more of a sparkle because it's got larger micron metallic in it. Um, but you get that same, same color. All right? You get that purplish. Um, it's... It's not black. It's more of a purple blue, um, and it does dry generally clearer, right? So, if he's using any kind of heavy binder in there, which it looks like it, that's exactly what it is. It's a small micron metallic flake, so metallic silver paint um, mixed in with some additional binder, and then you add in the black paint, and it's never going to look black as a mix, guys. Okay, the only blacks that look really black as a mix is whenever you've got a lot of particle in it, um, unless it's a gloss. And even then, a lot of times gloss, you'll notice you get that white residue in there. Uh, and when you mix it up, it'll almost have a blue tint to it. It's not quite black. It's blue. There you go. So there's nothing interesting going on here. This is... Just more, you notice there's a lot of protesting about how people are picking on him, uh, about how people question his stuff. Yes, they do. Uh, and it's very intentional. They do question your stuff uh, because, quite frankly, it's the way you do things. He even makes a statement in here about people complaining about his camera being too bright. Well, he's doing the live things now to show. Well, why would you have your room look two different ways and then go right back to that ultra bright look? There's a reason for that. And it's not like you don't have your settings jacked up for the uh, for the Facebook stuff either. It's just different. It's a different Kelvin temperature. You'll notice that light looks white in his live video. And then it looks almost like a golden kind of color in his YouTube video. It's just a Kelvin temperature. That's all. That's the only thing that's going on there. He's trying to position himself because he knows anytime that you catch somebody like this and you call them out, the first thing that's going to happen, guys, is they're going to try to position themselves to be able to explain all this stuff away. But that's the one thing he's never done. He keeps picking on Crow, and I haven't seen Crow put a video out about him really one. Um, but he keeps picking at Crow. Uh, I'm the one who's putting the videos out day after day after day to make sure that folks are aware of what's going on. And then he throws out threats like he's given us just enough rope to hang ourselves. Buddy, I, I'm smarter than that. And these other guys are too. This isn't about inflaming something. This isn't about slander. No, but this is, you, you need to remember, this is a social media platform. Okay. This is not somebody coming on your website and attacking your business. This is a social media platform. And when you do things like this and people call you out on it, they're full within their rights to do so. It is their opinion. They can express their opinion. But you have to ask yourself, you know, why is everybody always asking you to do the right thing? Nobody's asking anybody else out there. If it, this was just a takedown measure, then... Do you not think these folks would do it with each other as well? It's only you. It's only because you're the one who's given people. And in this same video, guys, he says the same thing again. That, you know, once you turn that projector on and turn the lights on in a room, your lumens start falling. And we've expressed. I'm, I'm telling you guys, you can have 
8,000 lumens on the back side of a room and as long as it doesn't really hit the screen on the other side of the room it's not going to impact the picture a whole lot it's not because light drops off and it's scatter and then he goes on about having floodlights well here's the thing see you set yourself up wrong Spotlights are really what you'd want to use because floodlights have such a wide beam angle that while they cast light on a bigger surface, the amount of light that they cast is actually less. And you can see that. Here's a prime example, guys. Look at the little 200 lumen lamp that he's got above his screen in his living room and how much light it casts down the screen. Where the flood lamp doesn't cast anywhere near that much light on that screen that he's got in this video. That's, that's prime evidence right there. That's, that's proof positive, really, that a spotlight is going to give you more focused, more intense direct light, where a floodlight is going to give you a broader wash. It'll cover a broader area, but nowhere near as intense in its light. And then I'm going to show you one last thing, and we'll close today. Okay, so this is what I was going to show you real quick. So this looks actually sharper in my phone than it does because of the light that's surrounding here but I, I just want you to pay attention see this and then how dark it gets over here so if you watch his videos you're gonna see you're gonna notice that happens all the time a constant with his screens that's the reason he's always used fishes because he doesn't like the fact that when he doesn't use fish, when he uses anything that's got somewhat of a bright image, um, you're going to pick that up. So you notice it's going to his screens are going to get darker over on this side, and then it's going to be real bright here because that's where the the source lights actually reflecting from. If he was to move over, it would just follow him wherever it goes. So it's not that superior of a product, guys. It's just that simple. I'm not trying to rake on the man's product so much other than the fact that he sells it as if it does stuff that it doesn't. And that's the real, real issue here. Uh, and just as a matter of statement, uh, I believe we had the first black inflatable projection screen there, Mr. Burke. Uh, I've just been waiting on you. I, I gave you a chance. I gave you a couple of days to get yours out there because I figured I was just going to come up from underneath you and... Uh, show you exactly what it could do but you know what i'm not even going to wait on you uh the bottom line is you know we're moving forward i told you we're going to do a review and then we're going to move forward permanently so you can have that reprieve but you'll always know that this information is out there and that people are going to be smarter and the review will summarize all of it with evidence to show so once again social network son so time to put your big boy pants on and either answer those questions or swallow your crow. All right, take care.